buffer pool extension. Now this is a feature. We enable it and that helps us. What is this? How it works? What are the benefits? Important terms, storage required for this buffer pool, SSD storage and architecture, working of buffer pool extension BPE, capacity limitations, best practices, getting information about uh, BPE and some commands for buffer pool management. Buffer pool extension. This is a, a feature, which is an extension actually in Microsoft SQL Server 2019. It provides seamless integration of non volatile random access memory that is solid state drive SSD extension to the database engine buffer pool to significantly improve the IO throughput. I think this is what I was talking about that you need to have SSD for one of the topic one was that uh, file stream and second is this and this is specially for this SSD solid state drive. The benefits of uh, buffer pool extension buffer pool serves as a primary memory allocation source for SQL Server. You know for the performance it play a very important role. A key component in achieving its efficiency. There are two mechanisms. One is buffer manager to access and update database pages and two the buffer pool to reduce the database file IO activities. Data and index pages are read from uh, disk into the buffer pool and modified pages are written back to the disk. Now assume that this disk is SSD or platter based disk. There will be a lot of difference between the two disks. In my system, in my laptop, I have 250 GB, 256 GB of uh, SSD drive and my windows installation is on SSD. The boot time is actually a few seconds. Earlier the system used to take four five proper minutes. The memory pressure on the server and the database checkpoint causes hot or active dirty pages in the buffer cache to be evicted from the cache and written to mechanical disk and then read back into the cache. Mechanical disk is what the disk I'm referring to is uh, where we have the platters uh, revolving mounted on a spindle and heads moving to read the data. So buffer pool extension if you have SSD solid state drive and you enable buffer pool extension it will make use of that and it offers these benefits increased random IO throughput, reduced IO latency, increased transaction throughput, improved read performance with a larger hybrid buffer pool and caching architecture that can take advantage of present and future low cost memory drives. So what is important, what is required, probably you will not be able to practice this particular because we need a solid state drive SSD disk for this or NVMe based disk. Solid state drive store the data in memory in a persistent manner. Buffer is an 8 KB page in memory, the same size as the data or index pages. The page remains in buffer cache until the buffer manager needs the buffer area to read in more data. Data is written back to disk only if it is modified. These in-memory modified pages are known as dirty pages. Buffer pool is also called as buffer cache. Buffer pool or buffer cache is one and the same thing. The buffer pool is global resource shared by all databases for their cached data pages. Then we have the checkpoint. It creates a known 
good point from which the database engine can start applying changes contained in the transaction log during recovery after an unexpected shutdown or crash. The same concept we have in Oracle also, we have checkpoint processor which do this job. The checkpoint write the dirty pages and transaction log information from memory to disk and also record information about the transaction log. SSD storage is used in extension to the memory file subsystem rather than the disk storage subsystem. That is the BPE file allows the buffer pool manager to use both DRAM and NAND flash memory to maintain much larger buffer backed by solid state drives. This creates multi-level caching hierarchy level 1 and level 2. Level 1 as DRAM and level 2 as buffer pool extension that is the buffer uh, BPE files on SSD. Actually it is making use of this SSD drive as I was talking about as I am trying to convey the message loud and clear that RAM, mechanical disk, in between we have SSD also. So this is making use of uh, these SSD drive, solid state drive, where there is no mechanical activity on the disk for disk read write. So this is the area in your architecture which have this buffer pool. If you recollect day uh, one yesterday, we have SNI, then uh, this is the region, relational engine and this is our storage engine. In storage engine, we have buffer manager which gets the page which writes the data in buffer pool and this is in RAM this is your in memory so cached pages get pages this is the activity between buffer manager and your L1 buffer pool and reading and writing from this activity happens to the disk which is the data file which are the data files mechanical disk but this L2 paging I.O. that's a level 2 where we have L2 buffer pool backing store a solid state drive SSD disk which there's the, where there is no mechanical activity can be used exclusively for storing these pages giving you a boost to the performance. This is uh, the buffer pool extension which the purpose of this BPE is this only. So when enabled, you need to enable it. It specifies the size and file path for the buffer pool caching file on the SSD. This file is continuous extent of storage on the SSD and is statically configured during startup of the instance of SQL Server. When the buffer pool extension is disabled, or related configuration settings are removed from the registry. The BPE is deleted on shutdown of the instance of uh, SQL Server. Think of uh, these files just to understand as swap files exclusively created for storing the data in operating system. The way we use swap in operating system, we use BPE uh, in the form of solid state disk, solid state drives, SSDs uh, for Microsoft SQL Server 2019. This is how we configure it. We use the stored procedure configure, SP configure, show advanced option, then reconfigure with override and this is how we configure this. SP configure max server memory. First is uh, we set the max server memory option to 1024 and then we configure BPE. Now we set BPE that is max server memory. So alter server configuration set buffer pool extension on with the disk c drive extension file dot bpe this file will be created and assuming that your c drive is ssd this will be an additional disk speech on faster disk for your cache this could have been explained in one line but we uh, gone through in detail to understand the working and the benefit and advantages and uh, though it is a simple one line configuration alter server configuration enable it 
and then specify the size where your SSD drive is. Some limitations. SQL Server Enterprise Edition allow maximum buffer pool extension size of 32 times the value of max server memory. The SQL Server Standard Edition allows the maximum buffer pool extension size of 4 times the value of max server memory. Best practices. After enabling buffer pool extension for the first time, it is recommended to restart the SQL Server instance. You know why? Because uh, when you restart, it enable it. It uses start using it the way we discussed swap. Because I can try to correlate it with many other examples. I correlate it with the swap in operating system. We create swap file. Either we swap on using a command or we set it into a FSTEP file so that every time we start our operating system or Linux, the swap is enabled. Set the buffer pool extension. So the ratio between the size of the physical memory that is max server memory and the size of a buffer pool extension is 1 root to 16 or less though max is uh, 32 times but it should be 1 is to 16 the lower the ratio in the range of 1 to 4 or 1 is to 8 may be optimal test this extension thoroughly before implementing it in a production environment you can get it information through views this system sys dot DM OS buffer pool extension configuration. This configuration view will give the information, and then we have DM OS buffer descriptors that will give you the information about buffer pool extension. So, in summary, the BPE extension commands enable configuration the uh, enable and configure the buffer pool is alter server configuration. Modify again alter server configuration. View we have this. Uh, view available to get the information monitor it we have dmos descriptors and performance counters also uh, which will give you the view and uh, monitoring of buffer pool extension memory optimized tables what are memory optimized tables they are creating normal using normal create table statement they are fully durable by default and like transactions on disk tables transactions on memory optimized tables are fully atomic consistent isolated and durable that is acid memory optimized tables and natively compiled stored procedures support only a subset of transact sql features there are no limitations for collations and code pages that are specific to in memory online transaction processing they are stored in the main memory. Rows in the table are read from the and written to the memory. A second copy of the table data is maintained on the disk but only for durability purpose. Point to be noted. Data in memory optimized table is only read from the disk during database recovery that is after the server restart. I recollect that this feature I think this is taken directly indirectly. I can compare it with uh, SAP HANA. SAP HANA is a memory oriented RDBMS where everything happens in memory but only for durability purpose for long term story purpose they have underlying physical layer it runs entire RDBMS runs in the memory so I think uh, uh, this inspiration is again from the parent this which is Sybase multi versioning this figure is state multi versioning we may have different versions of the same row we have same concept in oracle also the figure shows a table with three rows and each row has a different version the row one the three rows r1 r2 and r3 first row second row and third row r1 has three different versions this is first version after modification this is second version this is third version then r2 has two versions and r3 has four different versions the different row versions can be dispersed throughout the table data structure. The memory optimized table data structure can be seen as a collection of row versions. You can think of this uh, memory optimized table uh, as collection of row versions. Data access. Data in memory optimized table is accessed in two ways. Through natively compiled stored procedures or through 
interpreted TSQL outside of natively compiled stored procedures. Accessing data in in memory optimized tables. Memory optimized tables can also be accessed with traditional interpreted TSQL. Remember in Oracle and other RDBMS we use the term SQL but in SQL Server and uh, Sybase Adaptive Server Enterprise we use the term TSQL, Transact SQL. Interpreted TSQL refer to accessing memory optimized tables without a natively compiled stored procedure. Some examples of uh, interpreted uh, TSQL access include processing or accessing a memory optimized table from DML trigger or ad hoc TSQL batch view or table valued function. So native and interpreted TSQL access. Let's say memory optimized table. Access using natively compiled stored procedure, yes. Interpreted TSQL access, yes. CLR access, no. Similarly, memory optimized table type and then natively compiled stored procedure. So this is a table native and interpreted TSQL access for this. Performance and scalability. Factors affecting the performance gains with in-memory online transaction processing. For example, communication. An application with many calls to short stored procedures may see a smaller performance gain compared to an application with fewer calls and more functionality implemented in each stored procedure. TSQL execution. In-memory OLTP achieves the best performance when using natively compiled stored procedures rather than interpreted stored procedure or query execution. There can be a benefit uh, uh, to access in uh, memory optimized table from such stored procedures. Range scan versus point lookup. Memory optimized non-clustered indexes. We'll talk about indexing on day four. We have performance related topic where we'll discuss different type of clusters creating these indexes and working with indexes. We have a corresponding lab also. Support range scan and order scan. For point backups, memory optimized hash indexes have better performance than memory optimized non-clustered indexes. What are clustered indexes? What is non-clustered indexes? Obviously, we have a dedicated session on this indexes part. The query plan for memory optimized table can seen can scan the table in parallel. Hash index is also scannable in parallel. Non-clustered index is also scannable in parallel. And column store indexes have been scannable in parallel. Index operations are not logged and they exist only in the memory. Concurrency. Applications whose performance is affected by engine level concurrency such as latch contention or blocking improve significantly when application moves to in-memory online transaction processing tables. Now, the, in summary, whatever theoretically is written, whatever I read from the slide, whatever discussed, one line summary is quite obvious that when we create in-memory tables and we have uh, data stored on the disk for durability and maximum action happens in memory, then no confusion, no doubt that we'll get a performance benefit, we'll uh, have great efficiency. But having said that, there are some uh, pros and cons, there are some uh, trade-offs involved in that. You cannot use in every situation. This fine-grained lecture, though it is theoretical, will give you good insight into that when to be used, when to, not to be used, what are the uh, drawbacks and you know, advantages and disadvantages of using it. That's all for this BPE extension and in-memory tables.